Well, good morning all. I'm hoping, and I hope it is, Pandita Mary Dunbar, Mamma Bye. A lady to read about for a moment. So, let's come before the Lord. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made, and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. For Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. You God are oh my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. 
I have seen you in your sanctuary, and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you, I think of you through the watches of the night, because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings, I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed, they will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword, and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. Psalm 84 How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it the place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools, they go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield, the Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The next day Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood round him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge, while all these people stand round you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice. And may God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Teach them his decrees and instructions, and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave but select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousand, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them serve as judges for the people at all times, but let them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter, and because they will share it with you if you do this, and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain, and all these people will go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. 
He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties and tens. They served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided themselves. Then Moses sent his father-in-law on his way and Jethro returned to his own country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God, whom I will praise, the God of my forebears, whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. And the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed, and by your invisible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 to 18. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I'm sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He's coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner Aristarchus sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justus, also sends greetings. These are the only Jews among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have provided, they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras who is one of you, and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He's always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Hierapolis. Our dear friend Luke the doctor and Demas send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea, to Nympha, and the church in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see it's also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. Tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you've received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains, grace be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? 
Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. As the last day of the month is with us, we look, we think, we give you praise for another month lived, another month experienced, and the blessings we have had, and of course, for the challenges that we have had. Father God, as we bring this day to you, we pray for all this day will hold, for its tasks, for its opportunities, for so many things that this day will unexpectedly bring. Lord, in all that we are, all that we do, bless us and make us a blessing, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, as we look at the world today and its needs, this morning, being a little different, I thought we'd look at the newspapers, and so we do. And the Metro f leads with its only news, really, is that a, another fighter is missing, a British fighter killed in Ukraine. Biden looks to spend 33 billion in extra aid to support Ukraine. Even though Russia is saying, if you do, you will be viewed as an enemy. As their foreign secretary passionately pleaded with the wickedness, the cruelty, the illegality of the Russian action. America says, we will stand, we will support. China is in the worst state it's been for 30 years in matters financial, says an investor. The Prime Minister has acted to take away the whip and to suspend from Parliament an MP who has been caught apparently watching porn during a debate. And as we ask ourselves, can our government get any worse? Lord, we look at the things this day. 
8,000 troops are heading to Eastern Europe as a show of strength. The command that you must work from the office now has been denied by one of the senior people who now work at home and are staying at home, it seems. There's new, new claims in the eye regarding Parliament. They talk about assault, misconduct, misogyny in the House, a, an anti-women sexual harassment venue, they claim. Lord, so many things are wrong in our government, and it seems the news is only taken up with us today. As the news carries on talking about disorder in the house, in the government, in politics, toxic booze, porn, a car crash, an MP from the Labour Party labelled a bully, and it gets worse and worse. The male want Labour to be checked over lockdown lies and beer gate. And Rees-Mogg says, don't worry, no one's worried about Partygate. We all love Boris and all he's doing. <sighs> Lord, the BBC licence is going to end. The Dean Doris, that arbiter of all that is interesting and well-spoken, is shaking up the world. And, Father God, we... Look, and we see a picture of the Queen back in business. Father God, we pray for our local world and we pray for our wider world this day. Of which, other than Ukraine, it seems, if you read the papers, there is none. But Africa is beset by coups and governments in fear over the actions of zealots and others. There are conflicts still, Somalia, Eritrea, the Tigray conflict with Somalia, with governments being overthrown, people being replaced. Oh, Father God, as we look at all that this world is this day, as we, as we sigh over the brokenness of our world, Lord, we pray for its healing, here, near, far, everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, we look at the churches. We look at the churches in the news. We see reports of the talking Jesus report commissioned by many organisations say that in 2015 68% of non-Christians said they knew someone who was an active or practising Christian. This year the report and the project was done again says around 53% now know someone who's a Christian. Our reach as Christians in this country is falling. We are losing our witness. We are losing our influence. Most of all, we are seeing church diminish. So we pray for church, its witness and all that it is. Lord, build your church. Raise up a new generation, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our loved ones, for their needs, all that is within and around them. We pray for those caught in places of conflict, those with medical needs, those awaiting surgery. We pray for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. And so rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks for being with us, guys. Have a good day. Stay safe. Bye for now.